everyone, I'm Kim with Abundant Life Tarot, and I'm starting a new series called Where Is That Deck Now? Or it's inspired by a show that used to come on called Where Are They Now? Where it used to look at um, celebrities or musicians or rock groups or, you know, bands or things and look to see where are they now? They seem to have gone into obscurity. What's happened? And so this is an opportunity for me to share with you what ended up happening with the deck after I publish an unboxing of it. And what got me to thinking about doing such a thing is I still have unpublished unboxing videos that I've recorded but have not put it out to the public yet. So some of the decks that I'll be un um, showing as an unboxing that I published for you all um, I may still own it and may not, but I, regardless, for those videos, I'll probably be doing an accompanying Where Is It Now uh, video. But if ever you're curious about um, the like whether or not I still own a deck or whether or not I use it or how often I use it, let me know um, in, you know, in the comments of even this video, let me know if you'd like me to explore a particular deck that you see on a playlist of my unboxings and walkthroughs. I have a playlist on YouTube and I'll link that in the description box. So you could definitely let me know and I will then record a where is this deck now? Or we could even just shorten it. Where are they now? It's like the old school, but I, I want to differentiate it. So in case like there is some YouTube channel that focuses on celebrities or some, I don't know, musicians, and they say, where are they now? Where's the deck now? Where is, where is the deck? So if any of this interests you, are you curious to see what deck we're going to discuss today? Stay tuned. The deck we are discussing today is the Chrysalis Tarot. This is a deck that is mass marketed or mass market produced by US Game Systems. And there is a little white book that goes with the Chrysalis Tarot, um, as you'll see with the unboxing video. And there is a um, so there's a little white book that goes inside with the cards of the deck. But there's also an accompanying, more detailed and larger uh, guidebook sold separately, which I purchased as well. So I have both of them. But now we're going to discuss why I actually bought this deck. Okay, so I bought this deck because I went to get a reading in the, a city that was over from my hometown. So it was in Citrus Heights. It's called, uh, I think, the Cryptic Rose. It's like a, metaphys a new little metaphysical shop. And they had, a, they had a tarot reader on site. And she gave me a reading. And they had different decks on the table. And I thought it was odd when I went there because she didn't have a deck of her own that she just like, okay, this is going to be the deck I use. It wasn't like that. See, I've never did readings out of a shop, so I don't know what's normal or customary. So it totally could be normal that decks are, you know, just kind of preset there and the reader just comes in and uses them. And she, it just struck me as odd. So this deck, along with a few other decks, I can't remember, were on the table and I saw the cheery colors of the Chrysalis Tarot. And I was like, I really like this deck. I think this is the one that I'd like for you to read the cards for me. So she gave me a profound reading, you guys, like so profound. Obviously, and I'm always hammering this to everyone. Tarot decks, oracle decks, any kind of divinatory tools are just that, tools. 
we are the talent we are the gift we are the light that you know is the interpreter of what is coming through and what we're downloading from spirit so what i'm saying here is that she that's why she probably could have picked up any tarot deck and did my reading but she did the reading and it was so profound it, it actually predicted um the relocation that I made and also the ultimate change into my my career and it, it was a bang on accurate reading so I was like I need to buy this deck I want to buy it um so I bought it from Cryptic Rose I'm pretty sure I'm looking at my spreadsheet I didn't list it here but because I ended up well we'll talk about that in a moment so I bought the deck on February 22nd, 2019, and I bought the guidebook. I ordered it, I believe, off of Amazon or U.S. Games. I can't remember now. I bought the guidebook to go with it because I'm one of those people that I say 80% of the time, if there's a separate guidebook written for a tarot deck, I will order, or even an oracle deck, I will order it because I like to have a full package. Not all the time do I do that, but most times I do. So I did that. So, yeah, I bought it because this reader gave me such a beautiful reading. Uh, the colors were bright and sunny on the deck. The images looked very friendly. And I was like, I really want to get to know this deck. Um, and let's see what, what goes of it. And that is why I bought this deck. Okay, let's talk about where did it go wrong? <laughs> where did I realize there was an issue with my connection with this deck? Well, one day I was perusing a tarot forum and um, it, it will actually, it was a Facebook group um, that talks about cards and things and someone mentioned about the actual creator having um some different kind of views towards what he considered light or white magic versus what he would consider as i took it as barbaric or dark magic that he deemed evil and it bothered me a lot so i said well okay so one person people were chiming in and either disagreeing or agreeing with this person who posted this about this deck and up until that point that I saw that post, I hadn't really had a really good re relationship with the deck. Um, I would definitely try to use it in readings because of the excellent reading that I got from the tarot reader at the Cryptic Rose. Um, so I was like, well, I know this deck is a, a great reader. But see, that was my old way of thinking about things. And... I go into depth about this experience in the transitioning uh, from corporate to healer video, which I linked in the description box. Um, I go into depth about how moving it was. So I just had this hope that I was going to finally make a connection. None of the readings resonated when I would do readings for myself. I think I did a reading once for someone else, not a client, but like a coworker or something. So I was still working in corporate America or just having a nine to five traditional job. Right. So I was using it and it, none of the readings resonated for me. None of, it just didn't click. So when I saw that Facebook post about him having this different uh, take on on the different forms of magic in which, you know, in in and witches and how they practice in dark versus light um, seeing that exchange bothered me because he had Papa Legba uh, you know which is in you know in voodoo I'm not gonna go like I know it all but I know enough to say well wow you know you have Papa Legba in your deck but you have these different feelings about dark magic and I, I just was like that just feels so uh, icky to me it bothered me so much so then I went on Google and then I started looking up different tarot forums 
and I saw people's different takes on it and they were like, well, if you don't believe me, just check out his website, check out his social media. So I did. And what I saw was like, oh, this person, this creator doubled down on that. I thought, oh, he probably felt this way a long time ago and maybe his beliefs have evolved. No, he doubled down on it. And there was some, it, it just it started to feel like this person maybe have certain prejudices. And I was like, that's probably a reason why I cannot vibe with this deck. And I needed to see all of that, see those messages about this particular creator. Now, interestingly enough, the artist doesn't share in those beliefs and they're not, you know, this was a mass market deck. So I think they were probably brought together, this artist with this uh, writer. Um, so she doesn't share the same beliefs. That's probably why I was initially drawn to the deck because it's so cheery, bright, and I love the friendly, like I always say, the friendly art style. But, <laughs> but... Um, there was just something I didn't like. I thought it was the, some of the change of the, like, you know, fr in the suits, like the descriptions of the different um, cards. Um, I think the majors may have had changes. I can't remember, you know. So that's where it went awry for me with the deck. And, and then I just finally made peace with the fact that I was not going to have a really good connection with it. And it's also where I learned the lesson loud and clear. I had different run-ins with this lesson, but loud and clear I learned you if it's so important for you about a creator and, and how they move in their creation and what are who they are as a person and, and if that's important to you, Kim, you need to do the research on these decks. Really understand who you're buying from you know not just what you're buying but who you're buying from so i had other lessons but this one solidified it for me so that is where it all started to go awry with this me and this deck so what ended up happening with this deck you probably guessed it i ended up moving it on I sold it um, in the Facebook tarot marketplace and I sold it with the guidebook and I didn't have any regrets about selling it. Normally with my decks I struggle sometimes with letting them go even though yeah, it's not the it, you know it's just I'm not really using it. I struggle with that but in this case I um, I didn't struggle with it and I moved it along and I'm always curious to know how did the person who purchased the deck and guidebook how did they get along with it after I used it you know I cleansed it I prepped it and you know like I have my own little cleansing tools that I do and I send like a little loving prayer but I was like after that I just knew that I was not going to be able to enjoy doing readings with it anymore. So I'm looking at my handy dandy spreadsheet over here. You can't see it, but the laptop is here. And I end up selling it on Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Tarot Marketplace, a, a marketplace on Facebook, I should say, a Tarot Marketplace. Can't get it together on June 30th, 2020. So I owned it from February 22nd, 2019 to June 30th, 2020. And um, I didn't, I think overall, I sold it for $10 less than what I paid for both the guidebook and the deck, which wasn't bad for a secondhand mass market deck. Um, I thought that was a fair deal because I never really use it. I use it like mm, maybe three times, three or four times that the, the readings just weren't really resonating. They just were not. So um, I didn't use the deck. It, the guidebook and the deck still look very much new. And it was like, I'm just going to move it along. It's just not working out for me. And I figured, like, since it is mass market, maybe I might have a change of heart later. I can always purchase it again. Or even if it's sold out, um, I think that's also what solidified it for me. If the deck sold out, how would I feel about it? Uh, if it's sold out after I sold it to someone else, how would I feel? Let's say it goes out of print and then it's now high value. Would I be upset? And I was like, no, 
I didn't even I just was like no so yeah but I just want to emphasize one more thing you guys that just because I had that experience with this deck doesn't mean that you're having that experience with the deck right there are some decks that I totally love resonate and and it's near and dear to my tarot practice um that other people just don't vibe with we're all unique we all have different tastes so I'm not saying this or putting these videos out uh to just be like oh don't get this deck no this is just me sharing the full cycle of what ended up happening with some of these decks um because a lot of times we only hear about when you know content creators are receiving the items and decks in particular and not necessarily discussing what end up happening with them so this is what we're doing now where is that deck now so i want to hear from you in the comments how do you get along with this deck um did i you know offend did you guys understand what i was saying um do you want to see more of these type of videos let me know thank you all so much for joining me today and i will see you all around in the next video bye